Hey you guys, my family. So, um, you know, I've talked about this before that if you hear someone accuse someone else uh, or tell you what they're teaching and that they're teaching wrong, they accuse them of teaching wrongly. They say what they're teaching. They say it's wrong. You need, you really need to go hear what they actually said before making an assumption, or you might as well be reading the National Enquirer. Okay. <laughs> Um, it kind of reminds me of like, you know, so have you ever gotten in where you've been brought in to, to a debate between like a husband or a fight, an argument between a husband and a wife, and you just hear the wife's side, or you just hear the husband's side, and then you get really upset at that other person thinking, man, they're really wrong. But then when you hear the other person's story, you're like, oh, wait a minute, that changes everything. It, it, you know, you just, you need to listen to what was actually said before you make a decision. And there's always going to be people, of course, it was brought to my attention that someone uh, made a video accusing our sister Kiara, Mrs. Mustard Seed, and myself of telling people not to watch for the rapture, which could not be further from the truth. Um, we just say to watch biblically, you know, date setting is a harmful practice and it is not biblical watching for the rapture. And Matthew 24 is for Israel during the tribulation. And anybody that uses scripture to interpret scripture and rightly divides knows that. It is not about the church and the rapture. And the biblical watching is explained in 1 Thessalonians 5, and it's about being sober, okay, and, and having your armor of God on. That's biblical watching. And... Uh, you know, the rapture is Christ. We're supposed to be in love with him. He's the bridegroom. It's it's not all these, you know, a wicked generation seeks for a sign. And the rapture is imminent. And we know that it's a season. We know, you know. But, and that it's near. But there are right ways to watch. And there are harmful ways and substitutes for Christ that leave people empty and wanting. And that's all we're saying, okay? And you might ask yourself why someone feels like they have to rail against that truth. Be discerning, guys. And I was reminded of the scripture today, but where into, this is Jesus talking, he's talking about uh, the religious people of the day of the Pharisees. But where into shall I liken this generation? It is like unto children sitting in the markets and calling unto their fellows and saying, We've piped unto you, and ye have not danced. We've mourned unto you, and ye have not lamented. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He hath a devil. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold, a man gluttonous and a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners, but wisdom is justified of her children. Things are going to be made out of evident, guys, um, in time as the light of God's truth of his word, Jesus Christ, shines, okay? And we can't waste our time um, trying to defend, defend ourselves or explain ourselves to people that are committed to misunderstanding, you know, there are people that are, that are want to misunderstand and bring accusation. And no matter what you do, like, you know, they pipe unto you and you've not danced, you mourn unto you and you have not limited. That's about control. And it's about people that want you to play their game. Okay. They're playing a game that you can't win because there's no reason or sense to it. And no matter what you do, you won't win their game. So you don't need to answer their accusations because they're opposed to the truth. You know, the Pharisees were opposed to the truth. They were about themselves and about their flesh and their religious pride and whatever else they were idolizing, you know, their positions as religious leaders or whatever it was. And so they were going to bring <clears throat> accusation no matter what. And Jesus knew that. And that's why he said, "What? how shall I like in this generation? Okay. And talked about how no matter what, you can't win their game. So don't, don't dance to their tune, you know. Um, just continue to speak the truth in love. And the people that I've, God sees all of it. And people that have ears to hear, 
will hear and eyes to see will see. And that's about all I can say about that. And uh, don't get caught up in the stampede um, of those. If you remember my rhino rhinoceroses dream where the people in the church were caught up and um, they were eating junk food like a big bag of Skittles and watching a magician. Okay. There are so many substitutes for Christ in the church and that's where the devil is working. I mean, lost people are already lost, but he wants to cause problems in the church. And we already know, we were warned in the Bible that there are tares among the wheat that look like the wheat and wolves in sheep's clothing that look like the sheep. And we don't know who those are exactly. It, that's why God does the separating at the end of the age. But judgment begins in the house of God. And in my dream, remember, they were involved in all these things. And then these filthy, these tornadoes that were filthy formed from hair and filth and dirt. You know, that's a judgment that is formed from false doctrine. A judgment begins in the house of God. And these tornadoes turned into and formed these rhinoceroses. Those are brute beast guys. And they began to charge through the church. And I told people, get up on higher ground. And that higher ground is Jesus Christ. That is being uh, rooted and grounded in Christ and staying hidden in him and not cut up in all these other things because there were some people that didn't listen and they got caught up in that stampede, okay, of these rhinos charging through the church, uh, bringing accusation and charge against God's children. But you know what? When you're hidden in Christ, they can't touch you. They can't touch you. They don't have a leg to stand on and you won't be harmed by it. And in the next scene of the dream, I was uh, um, in a little white room with my family and I knew we were safe and we were protected. So, you know, it, don't get caught up in these things, guys. Um, because it get, you can be harmed by it. And I can't believe so many people unsubscribed and listened to this false witness of someone rail, bringing railing really, really accusations against things they don't understand. Um, unreasonable accusation. Probably not even actually hearing what we said. But regardless, this this is uh, the Lord is letting these things happen um, to shake things up, to shake them up. And I had done another video um, because he wants us to have an abundant entrance into his kingdom, guys. He wants to ready the bride. Now, we're all going if we're saved. <clears throat> all who are saved are going in the rapture. But will you be like a bridezilla or will you have a joyous, abundant entrance into the kingdom? With your eyes on, on your bridegroom ready to meet him, you know, or is he, you know, going to catch you drunk? <clears throat> is he going to come and you're going to be all drunk and caught up in these things and, <clears throat> you know, saying, you know, the bridegroom delays is coming and turn and beat your fellow, you know, the brothers and sisters. And, you know, we don't want to be like that. And even these people that are saying these things and saying these wrong things, um, I don't wish harm to them. I don't. I just want them to Come to the truth and rest in Christ and uh, have his peace and joy. All right. I love you guys. Be blessed.